All right, let's look at another problem where we're going to need to solve for x. The first thing we're going to want to do here is to distribute this x into the parentheses. So we'd have a 5x squared minus 2x, and this is equal to 3. The next thing we're going to want to do, because this is just going to be a polynomial, a quadratic specifically, where we're just going to factor it out and then find the zeros. So, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, so I'll subtract 3 on both sides of the equal sign. And that gives me 5x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So in order to factor this out, we're going to take, uh, since this is in standard form, it would be the a and c values and multiply those. So we really have 5 times negative 3, which is equal to negative 15. And then we need two factors of negative 15 that, when we add them together, we would get a negative 2. And as it turns out, it's not so far away from where we started. If we were to split this up into 5 and 3, uh, since we want this to be a negative 2, it would make the 5 a negative and the 3 a positive. Now this allows us to factor by grouping. So we're going to rewrite this after having split up this negative 2x. So we would have had a negative 5x plus 3x, which gives us that negative 2x. And then our leading term here is 5x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 3. And this is equal to 0. So from here, all we're going to do is split this up into two separate parts and factor out the greatest common factor from the two terms each. So if we look in this first one, we can factor out these first two terms right here. Let's go ahead and factor out a 5 and also an x. So inside, that would leave us inside the set of parentheses because we pulled out a 5x. So we're left with an x from this term, and it looks like we'd just be left with a negative 1 there. In this second set of numbers, we've got a 3 that we can pull out. It's a positive 3. And then, again, once we've pulled that out from this term, we'd have an x left over, and this minus 3 would have a negative 1 left over. And again, this is all equal to 0. So looking at these two terms, we can pull out an x minus 1 from both terms. And if we do that, we would have an x minus 1 here in the front. And then whatever's left over from both of those terms, we just have a 5x and then plus a 3. And then that quantity equal to 0. So from here, all we're going to do is take both of these terms and set them equal to 0. Let's take a look at x minus 1 first. So if we have x minus 1 equals 0, we'll need to add 1 to both sides. And that would give us x equals a positive 1. Now let's look at 5x plus 3 equals 0. I want to isolate that x, so we'll subtract 3 from both sides. And that would give us a 5x equals a negative 3. Finally, just by dividing 5 on both sides, we would find that x here is a negative 3 fifths. Now, in order to complete this problem, what we really need to do is go back to the original problem and see if both of these will give us a true statement. So this is the original equation we started with. And all I've got to do is replace the x's with 1. And we'll just use the order of operations to see if this is a true statement. So we have 5 minus 2, which is 3, times this 1, would still be 3, and that's equal to 3. That's a true statement right there. Let's go ahead and use now negative 3 fifths. All right, let's see how this turns out. So if we multiply this 5 times negative 3 fifths, we would get a negative 3. Then we'll work inside this set of parentheses. That's going to give us a negative 5. And we'll multiply that by this negative 3 fifths here in the front. 
which actually would end up being another 3. So this is also a true statement. So we've checked and verified that x equals 1 and x equals a negative 3 fifths to be true. And this problem is solved.